Just like to offer a big shout out to Touchdown Digital for sponsoring this week's video. Well, good morning, everybody. My name's Glenn Samuel. Welcome back to Sniper Photography. It's so good to have you all back here. Today, I want to talk to, talk to you about a subject which I think is absolutely crucial to our landscape photography or seascape photography, and that's light. But more importantly, the understanding of light, how to manipulate light, how to work with it, how to identify <clears throat> good light from bad light. So for me, I believe if you don't have light, you don't have photography, you don't have any images. So how do we understand this? How do we study it? Well, look, it all started for me probably 35 years ago. Um, I was shooting film, 35 millimeter film, and after some time, I realized that maybe the light, um, I need to understand light because my images weren't improving all those years ago. And I then started studying light and how to manipulate the light, uh, how to um, use the light to my advantage, and really, um, it became become quite a shock to me how the images improved um, just through understanding and how to use light. So, what do we do? How do we how do we focus ourselves on on the light? Well, basically. If I don't have good light, my cameras don't come out of the camera bag. They just don't come out. Um, I study light. <coughs> um, well, I'm a light fanatic. Um, I like to know what the light's doing every minute of the day, actually. So if you can manage light within the landscape, your images will improve tenfold. There's no doubt about that. Now, <coughs> for me, I look at the weather patterns um, the trends. If I've got a location in mind, I study the weather about four days prior to prior to me going out into that location. And um, just take this image, for instance. I'll show you this image. Now, people have said to me recently, oh, I was lucky to get that shot. Well, there was no luck involved. Um, well, there was a bit of luck involved because I'm lucky to live here and I'm lucky to be in that position or in that location to take that photograph, but there was no luck involved in, that, in, this, in this image. Um, this image, um, it took me four days of consecutive days of visiting. So every day I went back, um, I got close on the third day, but on the fourth and final day, that's when it really, really, really happened for me. And as you can see, I had this beautiful side light. Now this light only lasted about 15, maybe 20 seconds when there was a gap between the clouds, and I knew that there was sun behind there. You've only got to catch a jumbo jet, go up through the clouds. It could be cloudy when you leave, but up above at 38,000 feet, you're in sunshine. So behind a dark sky is, is sun. So I took that shot, and that was this is the end result, as you can see. Beautiful side light, and it works really, really well. Now, um, I think to understand light is so, so important with your photography. Now, um, on a daily basis, I'm using, for my job, I'm using strobes and flashes and artificial light, but I know how to control that either in a studio or in or on location. So with uh, commanding the light, you, you really have to um, think about what you're after. Now, for me, um, I pay very little attention to the landscape. I pay very little attention to the landscape. It's all about the light, and I match the light to parts of the landscape. That's how I do it. And I find by doing that, you do get better images, like the image I've just shown you there. So I think if you can grasp the light and understand the power of it, um, because there's cool light and warm light. Now, let's do the maths here. There's 365 days a year. You only get two times a day, twice a day, where you're going to get supposedly good light, and that is um, before sunrise and just before sunset. Now, if I know, if I'm listening to the weather reports, studying the weather, and they're saying it's going to be a cloudless, blue, sunny day, I just don't go out, I do other things. 
But if I see or hear or read that it's going to be overcast, possible showers in the afternoon or early morning with low to mid cloud with a slight breeze, I'm out there. I just grab my bag and away I go. My, my, my kit is already ready, always ready to go. I say to my wife, see you later, I'll see you at breakfast or I'll see you later on this evening. So you have to be ready for the light because light doesn't hang around for long. It changes every minute of the day. So I think... Um, if you can grasp that and how to work with light, um, you'll be so, so much better off. Um, people say, oh, you know, I really don't plan my landscape shots. Well, that's fine if that's that works for you, but you're limiting your chances to really good images. You really are, because as I said, not everyone can be in the right place at the right time, and not all light is perfect all the time. You just have to be ready for it, but you have to understand when it's coming your way. And by studying light and reading about it and making it part of your journey as a photographer, um, you'll be so, so much better off. Um, now, there's ways of controlling natural light. Just as I control it in a studio with artificial light, you can control natural light. And there's a few things you can do. One, you can use camera control. Now, I always expose to the right with the histogram. Always. I always expose to the right with histogram. I think that's probably the best way to, um, to do it. That way I can bring down the highlights and I can um, keep the shadows where they are. But more about shadows in a moment. Now, there's another way I control the light. I use filters. I use a three-stop soft edge grad and a six-stop soft edge grad and a circular polarizer. They're the three filters that I use. Now, people say, oh, but Glenn, you can do that in Lightroom. Well, you can, but you really can't because when you start moving sliders around in Lightroom, you're changing your exposure. Now, you're changing your exposure. It's as simple as that. So try and get it right in camera if you can. Now, um, if uh, you're out there and you're still struggling, there's another way you can control the light. Now, side light, either from left or right, is absolutely perfect for our landscape photography. It's absolutely perfect. That's the light you really want. So, but how you can control that is to shoot at a 90 degree angle to the side light if you've got side light, because that's how circular polarizers work. But I very, very rarely shoot at this level. Now, I'm a tall, big man. I shoot here, waist level. And even lower. Sometimes I've had the camera, you know, 30 centimetres or, I don't know, 12, 15 inches off the ground with a, a platypod or a um, gorilla pod, because that way I can control the light falling on the scene. Now, you've got to remember, with landscape or any hard surface, that's a reflector. So rock face, rocks, um, sand, all these hard elements in our image, they're reflecting light. And you have to know how to manipulate that light. So by angling you yourself and your camera and your tripod, you, you, are actually, you are actually controlling the light. Now, some people do that and they don't even realize they're doing it, which I think is fantastic. But if you can get your head around all this and how to manage light and capture that light and then mate it to your landscape, you're so much better off. As I said, I pay very little attention to the landscape. It's all about the light and matching that light to parts of this landscape here. Then I form the image, as you just seen in that, that, that image that I showed a bit earlier on. So no luck involved. I mean, you have to basically make your own luck. You have to plan your images and plan your photography around the weather because light will dictate whether you have a successful image or not. Now, myself, I'd... I've had disastrous days, um, mid-morning, late afternoon, where I thought, well, the light's going to be perfect, and I got it wrong. You know, I'm never always right. I mean, it's, uh, I've had some disaster uh, photo shoots out here. But overall, try and increase your chances by studying light. I've got books here in the library here on, on light, and it's just a fascinating subject. In actual fact, when my children were little, we'd go out and I'd be looking at the sky like this. I'd be tripping over because I'm looking up like this. And my daughter once said to me, Dad, why are you looking at the sky all the time, for God's sake? Well, because I'm studying the weather. And now she understands why, because she's now starting to get into photography. So the, 
the understanding of light is paramount to your success, to our success as photographers, especially when it comes to landscape photography, um, the manipulation of light, and understanding the Kelvin factor of light. In other words, cool light, warm light. Um, it's so, so important that, that, you, um, that you try and get that right, just to make your photography better. Um, and this has got nothing to do with um, how good your camera is or how good your sensor is or how good your, your lens is or your tripod. It's got nothing to do with that. In actual fact, if the light's not right, doesn't really matter what you shoot with and doesn't matter how good your composition is if the light's not right. If the light's not right, your image basically has failed because people gravitate to, bang, that, that lit image. And it's so, so important. But here's another thing that you must remember. When I was shooting film, I quickly realised that what the human eye sees is completely different to what 35mm film seen. Move into the digital world, what our eyes see now, our senses capture something completely different. You've got to remember, the sensor and the camera operates on an 18% grey scale. So what the sensor's capturing is not what you're seeing. Regardless of whether you're shooting in RAW or JPEG, it doesn't matter because that camera is registering grey at 18%. Our eyes work much better than that. So I've seen people take shots, look at the back of the camera or put it on the computer here in the workshops and it doesn't look the same. And I try to explain to them why it doesn't look the same. And hence, that's a reason why we do shoot in RAW. A lot of people don't tell you this, or because they probably don't know it. Because what our human eye sees on location is completely different to what the camera sensor sees. So you've got to remember that. Remember that. And work that light to convince that sensor, hey, this is how the scene is. This is what I'm looking at. And this is what you've got to make the camera realise as well. And you can do this, but you've got to be able to understand the fundamentals of light. And... Um, you know, it's just so important that that you get your head around um, the light because without without that, um, you don't really have um, images. So, but that's it for another episode of Sniper Photography. It's a it's a great subject to talk about. Um, I just I thought I'd just put it out there. I'd like to know your thoughts. Go out and have a look at the weather. Go out and look at the sky and come back and put some comments down below and let me know what you think because if you if you photograph um, in an area where you know you're going to get light well half the battle's over so study light religiously uh, make sure that you understand the properties of light and how to manipulate that light when you're out with your camera with different angles um, remember 90 degrees to side light that will work for you so I'd like to know what you think. Put your comments and thoughts down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If you're new to this channel, please hit that subscribe button, the bell next door so you don't miss anything. If you have signed up to this channel, if you've become a subscriber, thank you very much. It means a lot to me. We put a lot of effort in here and I really much appreciate it. So it's a great subject. Study light and you will become a better landscape photographer. So until next time, as I always say, be nice to yourself, family and friends, but most of all, you keep shooting, keep smiling. And bye for now. Go out and study the light. You will improve if you do.